Hi everyone, today we are doing a lesson about getting through difficult times. My name is Chelsea Kraska and our book today is The Lotus Seed. My grandmother saw the emperor cry the day he lost his golden dragon throne. She wanted something to remember him by, so she snuck down to the silent palace near the river of perfumes and plucked a seed from a lotus pod that rattled in the imperial garden. She hid the seed in a special place, under the family altar, wrapped in a piece of silk from the owl dye she wore that day. Whenever she felt sad or lonely, she took the seed and thought of the brave young emperor. And when she married a young man chosen by her parents, she carried the seed inside her pocket for good luck, long life, and many children. When her husband marched off to war, she raised her children alone. One day, bombs fell all around the soldiers, clamored, and soldiers clamored door to door. She took the time to grab the seed, but left her mother of pearl hair combs lying on the floor. One terrible day, her family scrambled into a crowded boat and set out on a stormy sea. Ba watched the mountains and the waving palms slowly fade away. She held the seed in her shaking fingers and silently said goodbye. She arrived in a strange new land with blinking lights and speeding cars and towering buildings that scraped the sky in a language she didn't understand. She worked many years, day and night, and so did her children and her sisters and her cousins too, living together in one big house. Last summer, my little brother found the special seed and asked questions again and again. He'd never seen a lotus bloom or an emperor on a golden dragon throne. So one night, he stole the seed from beneath the family altar and planted it in a pool of mud somewhere near Ba's onion patch. Ba cried and cried when she found out that the seed was gone. She didn't eat, she didn't sleep, and my silly brother forgot what spot of earth held the seed. Then one day in spring, my grandmother shouted, and we all ran to the garden and saw a beautiful pink lotus unfurling its petals, so creamy and soft. It is the flower of life and hope, my grandmother said. No matter how ugly the mud or how long the seed lies dormant, the bloom will be beautiful. It is the flower of my country. When the lotus blossom faded and turned into a pod, Ba gave each of her grandchildren a seed to remember her by, and she kept one for herself to remember the emperor by. I wrapped my seed in a piece of silk and hid it in a secret place. Someday I will plant it and give the seeds to my own children and tell them about the day my grandmother saw the emperor cry. And that is the end of our story. Now, I really love lotuses. I love taking pictures of lotus flowers so much here at the Sunken Gardens in Lincoln. And one of the other things that I see when I go to take pictures of the lotuses are dragonflies. I love taking pictures of the dragonflies too. So I thought that was a fitting meditation for us to do today was one about dragonflies. So let's get settled and get ready for our meditation. Take a few deep breaths and either lie down or get comfortable in a chair and prepare yourself for our meditation today. We're going to listen to our bell and when the sound is done then we will start reading our meditation. All right, so listen for it. Close your eyes and take in a nice deep breath. Allow your tummy to fill up all the way 
and then exhale slowly. Do this slowly five times to really relax your whole body completely. Ready? Five breaths. You'll notice how your body begins to feel deeply relaxed and sinks down further and further. Your legs begin to feel heavy. Your arms now begin to feel heavy and very relaxed. You enjoy every moment as your body continues to feel soft and warm with each word I say. Imagine you're a beautiful dragonfly fluttering about the sky. You see the lovely green valley below you with lots of colorful flowers just waiting for you to enjoy. You feel the wind blow against your delicate lace wings. As the wind touches you, it gently blows away any worries, any stress you feel. Enjoy how wonderful it feels to be free. Your mind is so clear and calm you are completely peaceful. You look so beautiful as you allow your true happiness to shine through. Gliding on the peaceful wind reminds you that you can feel this way anytime you want. We all experience moments where we feel big emotions and that's okay. Emotions and feelings are meant to be felt. We can savor and hold on to the happy feelings. When a scary or angry emotion comes up, it's best to feel it and understand what it's here to teach us. Then we can let it go so it doesn't stay trapped inside our minds or our bodies. As you continue to fly along as a dazzling, beautiful dragonfly, Notice how the sun touches your body and warms you. The big puffy clouds floating in the sky remind you how relaxed and calm you can be whenever you want, just by thinking about it. We all experience many emotions every day. There is nothing bad about them. We just need to realize that we are in control of the emotion and the emotion is not in control of us. You also know that you can deal with those big emotions by breathing deeply or slowly counting to five or talking things out with someone you trust. These are simple ways to stay calm even when we feel very strongly about something. The earth is a patchwork of color and you enjoy each moment here as a dragonfly gliding along feeling so joyful and peaceful. You spread your wings far and stretch and it feels so good. You're ready for an extraordinary day. Take in a deep breath now and exhale slowly. When you are ready, give your body a big stretch. You've done a wonderful job visualizing and relaxing. And now we'll listen for a bell again. Thank you so much for joining me today. That's the end of our time together. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye.